Hey everybody, Brady and Brandon back again with the Boogie Strike team to teach you how to brace properly today. Something we reference in almost all of our videos, probably the most important thing you can do aside from just moving when you're actually doing the lifts, and it's going to help protect your spine and improve performance. So bracing is something that everybody talks about in some capacity, but it seems like the nuance often gets lost. So today we're going to cover some of the minor details that make for a big difference in the actual output of what that does. So the biggest thing that we want to hammer home today is when a lot of people are getting their core tight or getting their abs tight, they end up kind of sucking in or crunching in with their abdominals. What we want, what we want to look for is good outward expansion and not just pushing your belly out and being inactive everywhere else. We want expansion through the obliques, even posteriorly. It'll be a little bit more subtle, but you want to be able to push that out below your belly button and your lower abdomen. All those areas should be things that you check and you should be able to just with muscular contraction, press those out. That's the other thing is that a lot of people rely just on air to get tight. So setting up for a squat, they'll be pretty loose and then and get tight. You should be able to brace and then breathe separately. Chris has a really good lecture piece on this that covers that in depth. Highly recommend checking that out as a precursor to this video. But we wanna be able to just use that muscular contraction, push outwards. And then on top of that, you can breathe as well. And talking just a little bit about breathing, you don't wanna just passively take in a loose breath. You wanna be getting tighter as you do that, kind of sipping the air and pushing it into your abdominals. We often find that people rely on oxygen way too much as a passive means of stability. Uh, what we're trying to hammer home is actually using your musculature to stabilize your positions in a, and have oxygen be the last maybe 15 to maybe even 10% of that entire equation. And as Brady mentioned, we'll often cue this through the obliques and pressing out. We should be able to do this without sucking in oxygen. And if you've got different issues controlling different areas, like for instance, if you have trouble keeping your ribs down, you can just push your fingers right below your ribs and practice pressing that out and using the musculature to hold that there. If you have trouble controlling your uh, L5, S1 area, your lumbar sacral junction, below your belly button, practicing contracting outwards there and just finding those areas that you're deficient in and bringing more awareness to them. Using your fingers as a cue is probably one of the most powerful things I've found for improving this. And a really great way to learn this is to actually take uh, the demand of hip stability and rib cage stability out of the equation. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. We can either have someone sit on a bench or we can have someone in a 90-90 position such as a dead bug, which is why a lot of our fundamental videos are done in the dead bug and that's where we focus a lot of our bracing at. So uh, you wanna have a seat? Yeah. Go ahead. And the other reason that we would use the 90-90 position is because it automatically puts you in this neutral rib cage over pelvis position. If you're not there, it's going to be a lot harder to brace. You can experiment by overarching and trying to brace and noticing you'll have a lot more activity with your back and not as much to the front and the sides. Same thing if you're rounded forward, you'll feel a lot here and not so much through your back. Getting that good stack position and then practicing is key. We have an excellent video on pelvic uh, positioning in the seated position when we're doing these bracing drills, but uh, assuming you've seen that, we're gonna ask Brady to sit just where he's at, and you can do this as a self-assessment or have a partner do it. We're asking him to put his thumbs really, really hard and jam them in as far as he can, almost like if he were to try and touch his spinal cord with his thumbs that hard, and then we're gonna ask him to force that out without using air. It's very, very easy to get passive with this and use oxygen, but we wanna use the actual musculature first and then use oxygen. Okay, so another cues that we're gonna be looking for or um, areas of maybe improvement are proper spinal position. So we're not crunching over to get our ribs down. A really easy way to get around this is to just pull your ribs down, but we lost all of our spinal mechanics by doing that. So keeping our ribs in a maybe neutral position and then having a long spine and then doing this is the key. And if you struggle with this, doing it in a 90-90 position, even uh, feet supported on a wall or on a bench is really, really powerful. And then you can begin to load this. So we have loaded variations of the dead bugs, we have wall bugs, uh, and once you get good at this, we can actually progress to maybe a quadruped position and then integrating it more into dynamic movements such as squatting, deadlifting, pressing overhead, and even bench pressing. Yep. Anything else you'd like to add, Brady? No, 
the biggest thing, like you said, is beginning to practice it through things like dead bugs. Once you build that awareness, then start to challenge that position so you can carry it over into loaded movements like squatting. Yeah, and I guess the last thing that I'll add is if you want to work on this, start practicing your squat warm-ups without taking in oxygen. Okay, so uh, maybe a plate, two plates, maybe a pl two plates and a quarter, go up there, press it out, and just breathe normally. We're not saying breathe during the actual movement of the squat, you can still take air in, but use your musculature nearly 100%. You have a lot of different opportunities to practice this outside of just doing prep drills too. If you're doing goblet squats to warm up, do it then. Do it on your light warm ups, do it with the bar. And you should be able to regulate that a little bit. You don't need to be 10 of 10 tight all the time. You can kind of modulate that up and down, but you do want to practice this as often as you can. All right, Brady and Brandon signing out.